the basic panel is where everything begins with the image. If there were no light in an image, we wouldn't be able to see any of the details and any of the subjects as well. So the basic panel right here plays a major role in how your photo turns out. If it's underexposed, overexposed, has burnt highlights and darkened shadows, your image will lose the quality it once had when you first took the image with your camera. So we're going to walk through what each of these parts uh, represent and what their functions are and how we can use each part to enhance our image. So the first thing you're going to see is treatment. And right here, you gotta ask yourself, do I want this image to have color or do I want it to be in black and white? Once you have your answer, you can choose either one. Maybe you want black and white. You turn it black and white and then you continue based off your choice. Or if you wanted color, you choose color and then you continue as well. So uh, for the sake of this image, I'm going to keep it colored and it will come back to black and white as well. Just to show you um, how these basic uh, adjustments can affect either type of image, whether it has color or not. So let's start with color. We're going to, so let's start with color. We're going to start with the temperature of the image. Now the temperature uh, speaks about the, now the temperature is all about, well, the temperature of an image. Do you want a colder tone or do you want warmer tones? And this really affects your mood, the mood that you're trying to portray uh, from your image. Right now it's more on a warmer tone. You can see you get this uh, mood that this was taken on like a sunny summer day and it gives you good memories. But if you turn it cold, you kind of get, um, maybe it was shot in winter, it's early morning, it's kind of sad. And if you notice in movies, you um, the temperatures play a really good role in uh, how the message is portrayed. If the main character's mother died, for example, and there's a flashback, it would usually be cold because it's a sad, far off memory. But if the character has a memory of uh, his childhood where he used to play around in the park, it would have a warmer tone to it because it's a warm memory and it's a memory that the character treasures. So temperature is really important. You want to make sure you're choosing the right temperature for your image and you can make that decision based off the mood that you're trying to uh, portray to your viewers. Let's double click and reset it. Now tint gives your um, image a tint and a tint that you can choose, it's more on the magenta side or the green side, actually complements the colors within your image. So if I gave this green, I am um, enhancing the color that the leaves already have. And if I'm turning it pink, I am enhancing the yellow colors that are in this image. So again, depending on what's in your image, you would want to use the tints tool to enhance the colors that are in there. Let's reset that. Okay, so that was the white balance and you could, uh, let Lightroom choose a white balance for you if you hit auto. You can keep it as shot or you can customize it whatever you want. And this is a white balance selector. You're selecting a part of a image and if you look here, it gives you a preview. So uh, again, depending on what I want, what kind of mood I'm going for in an image, I'm going to search a neutral color. This is a neutral color right now. I'm not going to choose the yellow because that's one of my main colors. If I choose this, this could be a good white balance for me if I'm going for a cold tone. But um, we're not going to get into editing the photo. We just want to explain what each of these mean. 
Um, and you know, up here, before I forget, uh, we have profile. Now what profile is, think of it as a filter or like a color grading uh, for your image. If I go and click on the color, first of all, I can choose if I want color or not. You can go to monochrome or color. And then you can browse the um, profile that you have, which like we said, it would be like filters. And uh, there are already a lot of presets for you to choose from. You can go in black and white, modern, vintage, uh, artistic, basic, and you can even choose favorites. There's like a star here. If I click on this, this will go in my favorite. And I don't have to look for it every time. I can just go in my favorite and choose. Now, um, profiles are different from presets. Presets are a set of adjustments that you've made, but profiles are more on the colors. They're adjustments for the colors. So let's look at this one. Uh, here you can see the tint is a bit different. The green hue is different. But um, the best way to explain it is, uh, is that the profiles are like filters that you would have to give your image a quick edit. Let's say I want this color, I'm done, I export it, finished with it. You can also change the amounts that you want. Maybe you don't want it at all, you want it to be way intense. And you can adjust how, um, how much of this profile you want. And again, there's uh, categories, color, black and white. Let's open the black and white. And you can just choose what you want and hit close. All right, I'm going to go back in my history and uh, let's look for, let's go back here on import just to reset the, uh, well, everything that we did basically. Okay, now that we're done with this box right here, we can move on to the tone. Now the tone of the image is uh, the brightness, the highlights, and how much uh, details are in the shadows, and if you even want, you want to fix the burnt highlights. Um, and it's basically just about the lightness of your image. Exposure is about the brightness of the entire image. It's not focusing on one point, it's looking at the whole image. So let's move it up. It's really bright right now and it's really dark. Because this adjustment is really intense, the maximum number you could go to is five. But if you notice, the others are a hundred. Because when you're working with exposure, you don't want to add too much. You have to add it very gradually. Like already 0.18, that's a lot of exposure. Let's reset that. So it's about the lightness of your image. You don't want your image to be underexposed or overexposed. You have to meet there in the middle. You have to be in the middle. And then we have highlights. And then we have contrast. And contrast is the difference between the lights and the darks of your image. So let's increase the contrast. And when you ha have color in your image, that would intensify the colors as well. It would give more depth to your colors. See, it um, saturated the yellows and the greens over here. And if I were to remove contrast, it, we will lose a lot of uh, depth to our colors as well as the shadows and highlights. So let's reset that. Highlight is the highlights of the image. And highlights, when we talk about highlights, uh, a lot of times they're really specific to a few parts of the image. Right now, if you pay attention, we're only affecting here because those have the most highlights. We can remove them, improve them, uh, do whatever we want. And shadows is the opposite of highlights. We're talking of the shadows of the image, which is the darkest part of your image. And right now, that would be over here. Now, white is about all of the whites in an image. It's not limited to one specific space. So let's move it up. You see every part 
lights up and every part darkens. It's not, uh, do not mistake this with exposure because exposure uh, brightens up both the darks and the lights, but whites only brightens up the whites of the image. So these are not the same. And blacks is the opposite of whites. It deals with the blacks of the image. So let's see if we move it up and down. And if I turn this all the way down and I turn this all the way down and highlights and shadows, we get this um, really, let's say, lifeless image because there's no detail in terms of brightness and color. It's almost as if we shot this under in a dark box. Has no character. It has no character, so let's just reset that. And this is how the tone works. Again, if you have no clue what to do, where to start, you can always just hit auto. And Lightroom will choose a suitable tone for you. You can start with auto and then you can just adjust whatever uh, Lightroom did for you. Let's turn all of those off. Next and final of the basic panel is the presence. Now, without the presence, our image um, does not really have a, uh, a base to stand on. You can tell that uh, when you enter a party, you want to make your presence known. So that means you have a lot of detail on you. You have a lot of the good clothes, good hair, good all that. And from there, people can notice you and they can build their opinion on you. Without presence, you would not even get noticed. It's the same thing here. You would always start, I would recommend always starting with dehazing your image. Right now there's a lot of haze. And let's, if we re increase the haze, uh, this is what it would look like. We can't even see anything anymore. And there's still haze on the image when you first import it. And this is something common uh, between among all of the images. When you first take it, especially if it's raw, there is a lot of haze in that image and you want to make sure you get rid of those by dehazing. And look, the image is looking a lot better and I only have just uh, dehazed the image. So when you're first starting out, I would suggest first dehazing your image and then uh, making some other adjustments um, after that. So uh, I wouldn't recommend starting from exposure because it could get a bit confusing. You don't know what is too bright, what is too dark, but you could always re uh, refer to the histogram. Let me increase the, uh, like I went all the way back and this is not balanced at all. We've lost all of the, uh, we love it. We've lost everything. There's nothing there. But if I bring it back, we can see our image has a room for being even more balanced, but right now it is quite balanced. The goal is to get, like we mentioned, all of them in one pike, in one peak. So, um, let's just undo this. Texture speaks, texture is for the texture of your image. It's the edges and um, let's zoom in so I can show you better. It's 100. Let's go here. And I'm going to increase texture and notice to see any difference in our image. Each of these spikes here have sharpened. This is without them. Look at Pay attention to the leaves again. We now have uh, a lot more sharper edges than we did. If I were to remove the texture, we have no, not, there's nothing sharp in the image. Everything is blurred out. So texture is about the texture. It's basically bringing the texture that the real uh, object, the real subject would have which in this case, it would be uh, sharp edges. It would enhance that element. We have sharper edges now. Clarity is about the detail of your image. So let's increase that. It even brings out the details in the background. 
Let's reset that. No detail. Increase detail. I can even see the pine the spikes in the background now. Let's reset that. Look at the details around. Pay attention to those. And now we have more detail. Let's decrease that. We lose all the detail. Everything becomes blurred. And you might be wondering, well, why would I want to turn these uh, to the left when all they do is lose detail? Everything in Lightroom has a function and has a reason that they're there. For texture and clarity, you would mostly use these when you want to smooth a texture. What would you want to smooth? Someone's face when you're shooting portraits. Especially when it's a commercial shoot or maybe a fashion shoot, you would want to smooth out all the pores and all the wrinkles if necessary, and you would be using texture and clarity. So let's reset those. And we explain dehazing. Now coming down to vibrance, vibrance uh, shows the intensity of the color and saturation shows the amount of color that's in an image. So if I remove saturation and there's no amount of color, then that would be a black and white image. But if I lower the intensity, notice that we still have some greens, but even though they're really uh, decolorized. So you can't use vibrance to make a photo black and white. You would have to use saturation because black and white images don't have any color in them. So if you want to um, enhance the color, you would first want to use vibrance. How intense do you want those colors to be? Once you've figured that out, then you can use saturation to determine the amount of color you want in that image. So if this is what I want, I will have to stick with it. If I go the other way around, say I want to be, I want this much color, it will look too intense, right? And this will take me a while to figure out where I should stop and where I should go. I would even have to decrease the vibrance. But if it's the other way around, it would be a lot better and I have more control over how natural I want those colors to be. Let's reset that. And now we're at the end of the basic. The basic panel is, even if you don't know how to use any of these, knowing the basic panel is very important because every little image adjustment is first made by the basic panel. So now that you know how to use them, You've, come, you've encountered a big obstacle. You can now edit images using basic techniques, and these are things that would appear in any uh, editing software. Doesn't matter what software it is and who the provider is. If you know how to work with them, you've come a long way. So in the next lessons, we're gonna talk about each of these once. But for now, this is the end of this lesson. I hope to see you in the next one.